All right, everybody, we have a super exciting week coming up. It is finally time to install our entire electrical system. Massive, massive thank you to Battleborn Batteries and Explorus Life for teaming up with us on this system so that we could get it installed and get it installed well. We wanted to incorporate only the best components. We had Battleborn Batteries in the van. They have worked well for the four years up until we sold it. All the same with the Victron equipment. And we actually used Explorus Life's wiring diagrams four years ago when we built our van. So it's really cool. We partnered up with them on not only the Victron components, but all of their wiring kits. My goal with this video is to literally take you guys step by step with everything we do. As for the batteries that are directly behind me, we have four Battleborn GC3H Game Changer batteries, but we're actually gonna be running a 24 volt system. We have two Lynx distributors. We have our DC distribution block, our AC breaker box. We have our Victron Touch 70 screen that's gonna be hooking up to the Serbo GX so we can see everything going on within our system. That's gonna be really cool. Solar Isolator, Victron MPPT 150 by 45 Solar Controller, Smart Shunt, the Orion DC Converter, that's the 24 to 12 volt converter. And then we have our MPPT 7515 Solar Controller. We have the massive Victron Quattro 24 volt 5000 watt inverter. Up on the roof, we actually have 1310 watts of solar that are on two different arrays, which is why we have the two different controllers. As for the Explorus Life wiring kits I mentioned earlier, if you go to Explorus Life's website and you're looking for, say, a wiring kit for my Victron Quattro inverter over here, they literally will make you a pre-packaged box that has the length of wire you need, and they will also package up the fuse, the heat shrink, the lugs, everything you need to wire this thing up to your Lynx distributor or whatever you are trying to do. We'll have timestamps down below so that you could click through the video. And uh, here we go, it's gonna be fun. Alrighty guys, so here we are under the bed. This is where our electrical system is going to live. We did the big raised fixed bed just like we did in the van so we could have our bikes in here, our 92 gallon water tank, and all of the electrical. So this wall, which is constructed out of half inch Baltic birch, and rib nutted to the box and bolted is 60 inches wide by about 40 inches tall. We've been playing with the orientation of the four GC3 Battleborn batteries for a while. This is what we came up with to be the best in terms of space savings for us. And then right here is actually going to be a concealed box. We're gonna build a box with the face on it. Down below will be the massive inverter because it's so heavy. And then up here is gonna be a face that houses the solar controllers, the solar isolator, all that stuff. And the reason we're building this enclosed box is because wires are messy and we cannot run wires behind our walls in here. So we're gonna build this box, feed all of our wires through here and down here. So we're just gonna get these measurements really quickly and start building that box. Also, don't pay attention to this wire right here. It's our ground wire. We had to install it before putting our wall up. You'll see it later in the video. So it's time to finally install something that is brand new to us, and that is the Victron Lynx distribution system. This is absolutely the best way to have a fused distribution panel. So you can actually tie two of these together, and you could have eight fused slots, which we're gonna need because we got a lot of stuff going on in here. They each have covers that could be removed to reveal their inside components. The distributors have a positive bus bar, a negative bus bar, four fuse holders per Lynx, and these little wire separators that snip into or out of place. The second Lynx distributor will be necessary in our installation as we needed the additional fuse slots. So we removed the hardware, cleaned the contact points with alcohol, put the second Lynx distributor in place, and reattached the hardware. Now that both Lynxes are mounted together, we were ready to bring them under the bed and mount them up to the wall. Christina and I had already figured out exactly where we're mounting them, so all we had to do was make sure it was leveled and exactly in the spot that we wanted it to go, screwed it into place, and called it a day. Now that our Lynx distributors are attached together and mounted to the wall, we are moving on to our solar isolator. This little white box's role is to allow or interrupt the flow of electricity coming from our solar panels and into our solar controllers. Here are the parts needed for this install included in our Explorus Life Solar Array wiring kit, which are the solar isolator, wire glands, and mounting hardware. This solar isolator has eight screw terminals inside which are connected top to bottom when the solar isolator is turned on. 
This means we could have two separate solar rays housed into this one isolator, with both positives and negatives being disconnected by the flip of the switch. I removed the caps from the top and bottom of the isolator and replaced them with the black wire entry glands. Next up, I stripped back the positive wire coming from my 150 by 45 solar charge controller, brought the wire through the entry gland, and inserted it into the first screw terminal within the isolator. The negative coming from the same 150 by 45 solar charge controller followed after with the same steps. Strip the wire, feed it through the entry gland, and insert it into its corresponding screw terminal. The remaining positive and negative wires coming from our 75 by 15 solar charge controller were also fed into our isolator here. Now that both charge controller wires were set up, we brought the isolator into our electrical cabinet and fed both the positive and negative wires coming from our 960 watt solar array and the positive and negative wires coming from our 350 watt solar array into the isolator. It's also worth noting that the solar wires were all disconnected on the roof prior to this step. We then stripped the solar wires to their proper lengths and got to work matching the 960 watt rooftop solar array wires to the 150 by 45 charge controller terminals and the 350 watt rooftop solar array wires to its 75 by 15 charge controller terminals that we previously installed into the isolator. Tightened all the entry glands down, triple checked everything was where it should be, and reinstalled the cover back on the isolator. I also made sure to turn the isolator off at this point. With this now done, we will move on to the installation of our solar charge controllers. All right, so here is our Victron MPPT 150 by 45 solar controller. This is gonna be the first controller that we're mounting up on the wall, and it has a few things for us to do before we hang it on the wall. First off, the layout is pretty simple. We have the battery side, which will be going to our Lynx distributor, positive and negative here. And then on the other side, the PV is the solar side. So the wires coming from our solar isolator, negative and positive as well. Down here is the VE direct cable, which we'll be plugging into our Servo GX. And then over here is the equipment ground. This is gonna be running to our inverter. Here are the parts needed for this install. In the Explore Slife Victron Smart Solar MPPT 150 wiring kit, which includes wire, which you just saw me install into our solar isolator, heat shrink, a mega fuse, mounting hardware, and lugs. To start, we will cut, strip, crimp, and heat shrink a six gauge by five sixteenths inch wire lug onto one end of our black six gauge wire. For the positive wire, the process is exactly the same just with red wire and red heat shrink. We crimped a 6 gauge by 5 16 inch wire lug onto one end of our red 6 gauge wire and added half inch heat shrink. On the other end of the wire, we stripped the insulation back to insert into our solar charge controller. Next up, we will wire the charge controller equipment ground wire, which has a 6 gauge by quarter inch wire lug that we crimped onto one end of the wire and a 6 gauge by 5 16 inch wire lug onto the other end of my equipment ground wire, both with half inch black heat shrink. First, I removed the equipment ground screw, then placed the serrated washer down on the charge controller, followed by the lug, washer, and lock washer, all to get tightened down by the equipment ground screw. The other end will get attached to the Victron Quattro equipment ground stud later on in this video. Next up, we brought the charge controller to our electrical cabinet for installation. We already pre-drilled the mounting hole locations and used the number 14 screws to fasten the controller to the wall. We then took the positive and negative wires coming from the 960 watt rooftop solar array side of our isolator, stripped the wires back and carefully inserted them into the PV positive and negative side of our solar controller. Be careful that there was no insulation touching the terminals and that there was no exposed copper strands hanging out of the terminal as well. We will be coming back to wire the 150 by 45 charge controller to our Lynx distributor in this video in just a few short minutes. Now that we have the Victron 150 by 45 solar controller installed for our larger array, it is time to do our cute little 75 by 15 Victron solar controller. This little guy is for our 275 watt panels, and it's actually set up a little different than how our other one is going to be. You have the same battery and PV ins and outs, but there's actually a load positive and negative as well if you wanted to run your loads directly to the controller. We are not doing that, so we're going to disregard that step. And since this little guy is so small, we're going to be using some 10 gauge wire and there's going to be two differences when wiring this up. We're actually going to be using some little plastic terminal connectors that we're going to crimp onto the wire instead of the proper lugs. And then we're also going to be using an inline fuse since this is going straight to the links. Here are the parts needed for this install. 
the Victron Smart Solar MPPT75, and the Explorus Life Victron Smart Solar MPPT75 wiring kit, which includes wire, an inline fuse, heat shrink, ring terminals, butt splice connectors, a blade fuse, and mounting hardware. To start, we mounted the MPPT75 controller to the wall and immediately got to work stripping the 6 gauge wire coming from our solar isolator for the 350 watt rooftop solar array. Carefully insert the red wire into the PV positive side and the black wire into the PV negative side. All the while making sure there are no loose strands of copper wire hanging out of the terminal and no insulation in the terminal itself. Now it's time to get to work wiring our red 10 gauge wire to our 10 to 12 gauge inline fuse on our positive wire. We stripped the wire back to an appropriate length and checked to make sure I was happy with the fitment of both wires and the 10 to 12 gauge butt splice connector. Use your small gauge wire crimper to get a solid crimp in the center of the butt splice connector and give it a few pulls to make sure you have a solid connection. Use your heat gun to adhere the butt splice connector to your wire, and then add your 3 8 inch heat shrink on top for redundancy so that your wire is set up perfectly. Then we stripped and crimped the 10 gauge by 5 16 heat shrink ring terminal onto the other end of the red 10 gauge wire, check the connection, and then add the remaining red 3 8 inch heat shrink on top of your ring terminal. Here's a full view of the 10 gauge red positive wire with inline fuse connected via the butt splice connector. I then took my black 10 gauge wire, stripped it back and crimped on the last 10 gauge by 5 16 heat shrink ring terminal, and then added the remaining black 3 8 inch heat shrink on top of your ring terminal. We then stripped the ends of both 10 gauge wires we just created and carefully inserted the red positive wire into the battery positive side of the MPPT 75 and the black negative wire into the battery negative side of the MPPT 75. Now it's time to bring these 10 gauge wires over to our Lynx distributor. We will start by removing the nuts, washers, and lock washers off of the leftmost terminal of the Lynx distributor with a 13 millimeter socket. Clean the electrical points of contact with some alcohol and put the black negative lug on the negative bus bar side of the Lynx distributor. Then I'll put the washer, lock washer, and nut back onto the stud and tighten to the appropriate torque. Next, we bring the red positive wire and lug to the positive bus bar of the Lynx distributor Reinstall the washer, lock washer, and nut back onto the stud and tighten to an appropriate torque. And we will now jump back to the MPPT 150 by 45 solar controller installation. We had already removed the hardware from the Lynx distributor, as well as the snap away wire separators. First up is our black negative wire coming from the MPPT 150 by 45. We cleaned the electrical points of contact with some alcohol and slid the black negative lug onto the negative bus bar of the Lynx distributor. Reinstalled the washer, lock washer and nut, then tightened to an appropriate spec. Reinstalled the wire separator and then brought the red positive wire on over. First we installed the 60 amp mega fuse, then placed our positive lug on top of that. Reinstalled the washer, lock washer and nut, then tightened an appropriate torque later on. Then it was time to fish the 10 gauge wire from our Lynx distributor over to our MPPT 150. Strip the ends of the wire off and carefully slide the red positive wire into the battery positive side of the solar controller and the black negative wire into the battery negative side of the solar controller, making sure there were no loose copper strands of wire or insulation in the terminal itself. That about wraps up the installation of both solar controllers in our system, and it's time to move on to wiring our Nomadic Cooling 3000 24 volt AC to our Lynx distributor. If you want to check out the full installation of our Nomadic Cooling 3000 24 volt AC, check out part 2 of our build series. The only thing left to wrap up this AC installation is take the 2 gauge positive and negative wires coming from the 24 volt AC and prep them for mounting to the Lynx distribution system. To start, I stripped back the red insulation of my 2 gauge positive wire and crimped on a 2 gauge by 5 16 inch wire lug. Added my red heat shrink and then moved on to the black 2 gauge negative wire which was the same process. Strip the black insulation back, crimp a 2 gauge by 5 16 inch wire lug on and add my black heat shrink. Now we're heading over to the Lynx distribution system. We will start by removing the nuts, washers, and lock washers off the terminals of the Lynx distributor with a 13 millimeter socket. Clean the electrical points of contact with some alcohol and put the black negative lug on the negative bus bar side of the Lynx distributor. Then I'll put the washer, lock washer, and nut back onto the stud and tighten to the appropriate torque. Next up, we added the 100 amp mega fuse to its proper location, 
reinstalled the little red ring terminal on top of the mega fuse, and then brought the red positive wiring lug to the positive bus bar side of the Lynx distributor. Reinstalled the washer, lock washer, and nut back onto the stud and tightened an appropriate torque. We are doing a bit of a rewind here, taking you a few weeks back to the installation of that mysterious chassis ground wire that appeared earlier on in the video. We drilled out a 5 16 inch hole into the galvanized steel stud post of our box, a perfect grounding location for our chassis ground. So we're gonna be using the Explorus Life 4 aught chassis ground wiring kit. Has the 4 aught wire, has our 5 16 lugs, has washer, lock washer, serrated washer, nut and bolt, as well as heat shrink. So we're going to put the wire together, bolt it onto the wall, and then put our wall panel back up. To start, I stripped back the black insulation of my 4 aught wire and crimped on a 4 aught by 5 16 inch wire lug and then added my black heat shrink. All right, now that our wire is all crimped on, everything is cleaned up, it's time to put the fasteners on, put it into the wall and get it going. So we have our 5 16 bolt here with our flat washer. Bolt, flat washer going together, sitting on top of the flat side of my lug. And then we have the serrated washer that slides on the back side of the lug. And this is all above the wall. And then on the back side of the wall, you're gonna slide your washer, lock washer, and then nut and tighten that all up together. And just to reiterate one more time, we have our bolt sitting on top of a flat washer, which is sitting on the top side of the lug. The back side of the lug has a serrated washer. All of this is above the wall. From the back of the wall, we have our flat washer, lock washer, and nut then tighten it all together. So the reason why we had to do it with the wall off is because I didn't want to make a massive box in here to get a wrench behind uh, the stud here to tighten our lug down for our chassis ground. So that's why we did it on there first. And now back to present time, we are preparing the other side of our chassis ground for installation to our Lynx distributor. I stripped the wire back, aligned my 4 aught by 5 16 wire lug, crimped it down and added my black heat shrink over the top. This chassis ground wire gets installed directly to the center stud of the negative bus bar of the Lynx distributor. So we remove the hardware off of the stud, struggled to remove the little red ring terminal, slid the 4 aught by 5 16 inch black wire lug onto the stud and added the red ring terminal back on. Then my flat washer, lock washer, and nut to tighten it all down. Now that our chassis ground wire installation is completed, it's time to move on over to the beast our Victron Quattro 24 volt 5,000 watt inverter. Alrighty, it is time to mount up this monster inverter, the Victron Quattro 5,000 24 volt. This thing is huge. I don't know how much it weighs. I think it weighs about 80 pounds. It's gonna be laying on the ground underneath the garage because I did not want this thing hanging on the wall. The reason we wanted such a big inverter is because we're actually going to have an electric oven as well as a dual induction cooktop and we wanted to be able to run them simultaneously while charging laptops and stuff like that. We didn't want to have propane in this build. We had propane in the van and uh, we just wanted to be able to go full electric, hence why the system is so big. So let's open it up and check out what's inside. To start, I unscrewed the cover of the inverter to see what we had going on inside. The inside of these inverters are definitely intimidating, but it's not that bad. We are going to be using the battery positive post and battery negative post, which will connect the inverter to the Lynx distributor. The AC in is your shore power connection with hot, neutral, and ground. AC out will be providing power to our AC distribution panel. This also has hot, neutral, and ground. And here in the back is our VE bus port, which will talk with our Servo GX. Lastly, we have our equipment ground terminal down here. To wire this beast up, we will be using the Explorus Life Quattro 24 volt 5K wiring kit, which includes wire, mega fuse, heat shrink, and lots and lots of big lugs. Time to wire. I stripped the red 4 aught positive wire back, aligned my 4 aught by 5 16 inch wire lug, crimped it down, and added my red heat shrink to both ends of the wire, followed by the black 4 aught negative wire. I stripped insulation back, aligned my 4 aught by 5 16 inch wire lug, crimped it down, and added my black heat shrink to both ends of the wire. And for the final 4 aught wire, which will be our equipment ground from the inverter, I stripped back and crimped on a 4 aught by 5 16 inch wire lug to both sides and added black heat shrink. And bear with me here, we are actually going to be jumping over to the AC distribution panel kit from Explorus Life. 
The next step in our install was using the 6-3 triplex wire from this kit to wire the AC out portion of our inverter. And the wiring kit contains wire, a 50 amp main breaker, a cable gland, mounting screws, heat shrink, and lugs. We are also using three 20 amp tandem breakers. We will go into detail with this panel later in the video. For now, we just need the 6-3 wire. First up, we added some heat shrink over the stripped end of the 6-3 cable. This will keep the install looking clean and protected when we enter this wire through the cable entry gland of the inverter. And strip back the hot, neutral, and ground wires. Added their individual pieces of heat shrink and got to work crimping the lugs down as well. It's a little bit of a wrestling match, crimping all three of these lugs on, just take your time. But we were extremely pleased with how clean it all came out, and then we loosened up all the hardware to prepare for connecting everything up. You can see we actually removed the entry gland from the inverter and pre-installed it onto the 6-3 wire, then fished the wire through to the length we needed and tightened that entry gland down. This was the best way we found to accomplish this tough task of entering the 6-3 wire into the inverter. We played with the orientation of the wires for a bit before finding the cleanest wire run. And once we were satisfied with that, we tightened the hot, neutral, and ground wires down. Have some patience for wiring up your inverter. There are a lot of tangled wires in there and you absolutely want everything set up well and organized. Organized wire is safe wire. And bear with us again here. We now need to wire the AC in portion of the inverter. So. Next up, we will pull out the Explorus Life Shore Power wiring kit to use the 10 gauge triplex wire contained in there. We will go into greater detail installing the Shore Power inlet later in this video. For now, we just need the wire. This kit contains wire, the Shore Power inlet, heat shrink, ring terminals, mounting screws, and a 30 amp to 15 amp adapter. We quickly got to work stripping back the 10 gauge triplex wire and crimping all three 10 to 12 gauge heat shrink ring terminals on with our small gauge wire crimper. Make sure there are no loose strands of copper hanging around, add your heat shrink and clean the wires with some alcohol prior to installation. Again, we removed the wire entry gland from the inverter and inserted it onto the wire itself. It was easier doing it this way for feeding the wire into the inverter. And again, take your time to organize these wires Make sure there are no loose strands of copper anywhere in this inverter. Make sure those wire runs are smooth and tidy before tightening them down. After a few hours of playing around in this big blue box, we were extremely pleased with how clean all of it came out. All right, and now back to wiring the battery positive and negative four aught cables that we wired up earlier in this video. So we removed the hardware, clean the electrical points of contact and fed the black negative wire into the inverter first. Place the lug down on the terminal stud, reinstalled the flat washer, lock washer and nut to tighten it all down. Next, we cleaned the red positive wire and its terminal, fed it into the inverter and tighten everything back together with flat washer, lock washer and nut to appropriate spec later on. Lastly, we connected our blue VE cable, which will allow our Quattro inverter and Servo GX to talk to one another. We then got to work screwing the mounting plate into the base of our electrical cabinet. The inverter slides onto the lip at the top of this plate, which holds it in place, and there are numerous screw locations to tighten it down. And for our very last connection on the inverter, we removed the hardware on the equipment ground stud to prepare for cable attachment. Clean the electrical points of contact, replaced the serrated washer, and brought over the monster 4 aught lug and the other end of our equipment ground wire from our MPPT-15045, which was a 6 gauge wire and lug, reinstalled the washer, lock washer, and nut to tighten it all down. Next, we fished the three 4 aught cables coming off of the inverter. MPPT 150 by 45 equipment ground wire, VE bus wire, and the 63 triplex wire into our electrical cabinet through some wireways we previously cut into the cabinet. It was not an easy task getting these wires to fit, and you can now see why we pre-wired the entire inverter ever before inserting it into this cabinet. Next up, we headed back to connect our battery positive and negative cables coming from the Quattro inverter. We removed the hardware, cleaned the electrical points of contact, and brought the black 
4 watt negative wire to the negative bus bar of the links first. Reinstall the flat washer, lock washer and nut, and tighten it all down. Drop the 400 amp mega fuse in place, and reinstall the washer, lock washer, and nut to both terminals and tighten to an appropriate torque later on. Lastly, we brought the black 4 watt negative equipment ground wire from the Quattro inverter over to our second Lynx distributor's negative bus bar center stud. Remove the little red ring terminal and installed the 4 watt lug onto the stud. Reinstalled the little red ring terminal, flat washer, lock washer and nut, and tighten it all down. Now that the monster Quattro inverter is all wired up and installed securely to our electrical cabinet, we are moving on to the installation of our Servo GX. So the next little guy that we're going to be installing is something that's super exciting. Uh, they were not making it when we built our van, and that is the Servo GX. This little thing can do everything from monitoring your battery state of charge, incoming solar, your power usages throughout your system, and a bunch of other stuff. I'm just going to be showing y'all what we're going to be using it for, keeping it simple. On top of the Servo GX, we also have a couple cables that Explorer's provided in their kit. One was the RJ45 cable, which we ran from the inverter. That is the blue cable that's gonna be going to Servo. And then we also have two VE Direct cables. One's gonna be going from our 15045 solar controller to Servo. The other's gonna be going to our Smart Shunt. And then the really exciting part is our GX70 touchscreen. This is gonna be mounted up on the wall with the included wall mounting kit. This thing is going to be telling us everything we could have ever imagined and it's going to look really nice on the wall rather than just seeing everything through Bluetooth like we did in the van uh, when we had the BMV 712. So really excited about this. To start, we will mount the Servo GX up on the wall. This is a perfect mounting location for us with loads of room to clean up any incoming or outgoing wires. Now, here's the power in cable which will plug into the bottom corner of the Servo GX with the other end housing ring terminals, which will run up and over to our Lynx distributor. Once the system is up and running, these cables will provide power to the Servo GX. We are connecting the ring terminals to the far left studs of our Lynx distributor, actually where we mounted up our MPPT7515 earlier in this video. We will simply undo the mounting hardware, stack the Servo GX ring terminals atop the MPPT7515 ring terminals, the black wire to the negative bus bar, install the red wire to the positive bus bar, and reinstall the washer, lock washer, and nut, and tighten it all down together. Now, I'm unsure what happened to the footage of us wiring up the Servo GX, so I'm very sorry to not have a clear video showing all the connections. So check out Explorer's Life's video to see how they did it. The blue RJ45 UTP cable, which is coming from our Quattro inverter, will connect to the top right VE bus port. The black cables you see being installed here are the VE Direct cable coming from the VE Direct port on our MPPT15045 controller, and the other VE Direct cable from another VE Direct port on our MPPT7515. So we're at the point in the build now where we uh, almost have everything mounted up. There's four more components we need to mount, and we're gonna be mounting up three of them right now onto this 14 by 24 three quarter inch board of Baltic birch plywood. Uh, the reason we're making this face is to cover off the electrical enclosure so a you're hiding the wires but b the walls in our truck are very shallow unlike vans you can't mount up these deep distribution panels in the walls we don't have the depth so this wall will have all of our 12 volt circuits on here our 120 ac breaker box which is very deep on there and then our victron orion 24 to 12 volt converter so what I need to do is get all the dimensions, make these square cutouts in this board, mount it up, and get wiring. We really wanted this enclosure face to look extremely clean and tie the remaining components together super well. We took loads of measurements, traced out those numbers onto the board, and taped it off to cut. The first square is for the 12 volt fuse panel, and once we knew that fit was sufficient, we moved on to the AC distribution panel. Followed the same steps, used a framing square to draw out our cut space, and got to work. The fitment between the AC and DC panel was actually really close. For the Orion converter, we needed to know where we were mounting it so that we could prepare an entry hole in the face of the wood. Alrighty, so this is the face. It's officially sealed up and ready to go. This is the front side. And then to secure it on the rear side, we're going to be pocket screwing it in uh, along the sides and the bottoms. 
I did a bunch of them. I doubt we're gonna use all of them, uh, but this will be easily removable. And then the other nice thing too is if we ever need to service the AC or the DC panel, we just need to unscrew it and uh, pull the wires down. So I think this is gonna work out really well for us. It was really exciting seeing this electrical cabinet vision come to life after nearly three full days of wiring to get to this point. It was easier to see behind the board than I initially expected. And if I ever need to service or tidy up any wires behind the face, it will not be a problem whatsoever. This little guy is gonna be responsible for converting the 24 volt power coming from our battery banks and sending 12 volts of power up to our 12 volt distribution panel. It can handle up to 70 amps, which is awesome because we won't be hitting that. And some of the 12 volt loads that this little guy will be converting power for is things like our lights, our fridge, dimmer switches, USB outlets, and other little things like that. On top of the Orion converter, we have the Explore Slife Orion 24 12 volt wiring kit. That includes wire, lugs, a mega fuse, mounting screws, and heat shrink. On the bottom corner of the Orion are three different terminals that we will be using. The positive power in terminal, the positive power out terminal, and the negative terminal. We got to work stripping the red six gauge positive wire, crimping on a six gauge by quarter inch wire lug to one side and a six gauge by 5 16 inch wire lug to the other side, both with red half inch heat shrink. And did the same to the black negative six gauge wire crimped on a six gauge by quarter inch wire lug to one side and a six gauge by 5 16 inch wire lug to the other side. Inserted my black six gauge negative wire to the negative bus bar of the links, installed the wire separator, added my mega fuse, put my six gauge positive wire on top of the positive bus bar and reinstalled the washer, lock washer and nut and tightened it all down. I also made a positive and negative six gauge wire with six gauge quarter inch wire lugs on both sides and half inch heat shrink to run from the Orion converter over to the 12 volt fuse panel. So I removed all the hardware from its terminals and cleaned my electrical points of contact. First we installed the red positive power in cable coming from the Lynx distributor, then my first black negative wire coming from the Lynx, then stacked the second black negative wire lug going from the Orion to my 12 volt fuse panel onto the first and lastly, the red positive cable going from the converter to my 12 volt fuse panel. The hole I am using to pass the wire through below the Orion is fairly tight. So I rounded the corners in the opening so there were no sharp edges and also double wire loomed the wires themselves to be extra cautious. Hung the Orion up on the wall with the provided mounting screws. I actually had to remove the green wire bridge to screw the bottom corner of the Orion in, but make sure you reinstall it once you are done or the Orion will not function at all. The layout of the Orion worked out extremely well in this orientation and we could not be happier. Next up is our 12 volt fuse panel. Now that we have the Orion 24 to 12 volt converter set up, it is time to wire up our 12 volt fuse panel. So this thing has three spots for connections. We'll start off with the back side. Down here at the bottom are some six gauge connectors. This is where the positive input from our Orion is gonna be coming to supply power to everything you see here. This is the negative bus bar. This side has the positive terminals for all of our branch circuits. And if you flip it around, pop the cover off, you could see all the blade fuse locations. And then cool thing on the inside of the little opening door there, you can label all of your fuses and what circuit is where. All right, this is probably, actually it's absolutely the messiest part of the entire electrical system install. First off, I opened up the screw terminals on the back side of the panel to allow my six gauge red positive wire coming from my Orion to attach to. This will supply 12 volt power to the entire panel and thus power all of my 12 volt loads. We stripped the wire back, inserted it into its respective terminal and did the same with the black six gauge negative wire coming from the Orion. The negative wire simply attaches to the negative bus bar of the panel. And now the fun begins. Make sure all of your 12 volt load wires are labeled so you know what is what and start stripping the insulation back. There's really no special way to do this, just start doing it and you'll figure it out. One thing worth noting is to not over tighten the terminals if you're using an impact driver like I am. Make sure there are no messy or loose copper strands anywhere in the panel. With it all wired up, you can now see why we wanted to hide all of those ugly wires. It looks so much neater with the face cover on. We carefully aligned the panel and screwed it into its new home. We did not film installing blade fuses to their corresponding circuits, so I recommend going onto Explorus Life's website and using their fuse size calculator to help you out. Here we are, 
Time to wrap up the installation of our AC distribution panel, which will have power supplied from the 6.3 wire coming from our Quattro inverter. First up, we removed the wire entry gland and inserted it onto the 6.3 wire. This is the easiest way to get the wire into the AC panel we found. We then fed all of the 12.3 flat triplex wire into the respective slots along the breaker panel. The flat wire was much easier to fit through the slots rather than round wire, so take that into account. We then stripped back the insulation on all triplex wires in the breaker box and prepared them for installation into the individual breakers. The white wires get installed to the frontmost bus bar and the ground wire gets installed into the rear bus bar. For the black wire, we installed that into our main 50 amp breaker, which gets installed centermost in the breaker panel, and the remaining black wires fasten into their own 20 amp breakers as needed. Make sure there are no loose or messy strands of wire hanging about anywhere and lastly, install the little metal clip that holds the main breaker in place. Pop the cover on and screw everything into your wall. This was a few solid hours of tedious work, but it came out neat and we are very happy with the outcome. Next up is shore power. So, installing our shore power outlet is the last thing that we need to do. And we're gonna be doing it a little different than most. We're actually gonna be installing it inside the truck. We didn't wanna see it on the outside. There weren't really any good spots underneath it. So we're going to put it inside because we rarely, rarely, rarely plug into shore power and I'm going to show you how we're going to do it. So here is the uh, shore power plug that comes in the Explorers Life uh, wiring kit. And then here's the back. This is to, you know, protect the wires and protect the back as it's coming through your vehicle, your RV, whatever material or vehicle you're installing it in. We're going to be getting rid of that. And then you can see where the three wires get inserted in and tightened down. You know, you don't want to just see this sitting inside of your vehicle. So I actually purchased some black uh, electrical outlet boxes off of Amazon and they're quite deep and I actually drilled a couple holes in them so this will be for the shore power outlet to sit in so it slides in I think it looks really clean and this is what we're gonna see on the inside of the truck and then here is the back of the box I drilled a one inch in diameter hole so this will all tighten up together wire will get fed up through the bottom and I think it's gonna look really great on the wall so let's install it I stripped back the 10-3 wire and also stripped back the individual line, neutral, and ground wires. Pulled them into my makeshift shore power wire box, inserted them into their respective line, neutral, and ground slots on the back side of the shore power inlet, and buttoned it all up. I then used machine screws and nuts to hold the inlet to my shore power box, tightened those down, and installed it to the wall. We were really happy to not see a shore power inlet on the outside of the truck, and it's an excellent and usable location for us. One thing worth mentioning, we are actually not gonna be installing alternator charging right now. We are waiting on a specific product to hopefully come out in the 24 volt space. Once that does come out, we will be filming an installation video on the truck of that alternator charging solution. It is officially time to start mounting up our batteries and uh, Battleborn is awesome because they actually sell mounting brackets for these GC3 batteries. Um, they come in four packs with M5 machine screws. Uh, one side's narrower than the other. The narrow side here is actually threaded so you can thread the machine screw through. So to mount these up, how we're doing it, uh, we're gonna have the threaded side on the batteries themselves. And on the inside of the feet, they've actually recessed the heads so that these machine screws will sit in there nice and tight and they will bolt right through the feet. And then these brackets will be attached to the batteries. And then on top of the feet being bolted to the batteries, we're also gonna be bolting the batteries together with the M5 machine screws. Here's a closer up view mounting the Battleborn mounting brackets to the battery feet. You can see the machine screw coming through the foot of the battery and tightening into the threaded side of the bracket. And then I purchased some nylock nuts for these M5 machine screws and we're just gonna be bolting them all together. This side's gonna be really, really strong as they're tied together. And then we're gonna be using some, some number 10 one inch wood screws. And we're gonna screw this entire side into the floor. So this side's gonna be bolted. This is gonna be screwed into the floor so they can't rock. And then something you can't see, and it's gonna be hard to show against the wall. Uh, the mounting feet are getting screwed into the wall with no brackets. We're screwing them straight in. And then the other thing we're doing is we're gonna be screwing some handles into the floor and we're gonna be putting straps over the batteries. So one of them is gonna come over the top here 
And then the other strap's gonna be from the wall all the way around here to prevent any rocking. So these things are not going anywhere. And here's a closer view using the Battleborn brackets, M5 machine screws, and M5 nuts, which I purchased to bolt the batteries to one another. Since these batteries are standing upright, we really wanted them to be fastened together well and in as many ways as we could possibly think of. These are the handles that we will be feeding the straps through to also hold the batteries in place. I just use four beefy wood screws and fasten them into the hardwood floors of the box. There are also handles against the wall, which means we will have straps running in two different orientations, which you will see soon. Alrighty, so it's finally time to wire up our first pair of batteries. Uh, this is the side that's not going to be on the wall. This is going to be facing the inside of the truck. This side over here is the wall side. This is what we're mounting up first. These are going to be our series connections. This side's going to be the parallel side. We're not doing these yet. So right now we're going to wire up the series connection on the other side of the battery, as well as our first heater jumper wire from battery one to battery two. These batteries will be making our home a home. Without them, we would have no way to store electricity required to power any of our appliances. They each store 270 amp hours or 3,240 watt hours of power. Since we have four of them, we will have a total of 12,960 watt hours of stored power or 540 amp hours at 24 volts or 1,080 amp hours at 12 volts. They are also highly configurable since you can mount them in any orientation and they are heated, which means they are perfect for those cold winter trips. Since we have four 12 volt batteries and we want to make a 24 volt battery bank, we needed to come up with a unique way of wiring the system together. Essentially, we did a series parallel configuration combined into one. I promise this will all make sense shortly. To wire the batteries, we are using the Explorus Life 24 volt battery bank wiring kit with four aught wire. First, we are making the two shorter series connection wires to make our 12 volt batteries into a 24 volt battery bank. So we took the red four aught cable, stripped the ends off, crimped on a four aught by 5 16 inch wire lug, and added red heat shrink to both ends. We repeated this process for a total of two cables for both series connections. We then removed the battery feet covers off the first two batteries to install the battery heater wires. I forgot to film the creation of these heater wires, so refer to Explorer Slife's video for that information. But if you've made it this far into the video, I have faith that you could figure it out yourself. With the heater wire installed to its terminal, we put the battery foot back in its place and cleaned both battery terminals in preparation for mounting our wires. The lugs should be in direct contact with the battery terminals, with washers on both sides, and a nut on the bottom for our installation. We tightened it all the way down with a half inch wrench and socket. And once that was done, I reinstalled the battery terminal covers and got a couple of close up shots for your viewing pleasure. We now jumped around to the other side of the batteries. Here you will see two heater wires, one coming from the initial heater terminal that you just saw us install, and the second wire, which will be going down the chain of batteries until it reaches the last battery in the system. And then we slid the batteries into place, made sure that the straps were easy to reach, screwed the battery feet into our Baltic birch plywood walls, and fastened them through the Battleborn mounting brackets to the floor. And here's a sped up view installing the other series connection wire to our second pair of batteries. Again, make sure the lug is sitting directly on the battery terminals with washers on both sides and a nut to finish it off with a half inch wrench and socket. Here we go. We are officially sliding this second pair of batteries into its new home, making sure we are happy with the straps and also screwing the remaining battery feet in. Now, it's time for some more wiring. This time the cables will be a bit longer as we are now making the parallel battery wires. I very quickly stripped back both ends of the black negative four aught wire crimped on a 4 aught by 5 16 inch wire lug, followed by stripping back both ends of the red positive 4 aught wires, crimping on 4 aught by 5 16 inch wire lugs, and adding red heat ring to both ends. These are my parallel cables, and let's get wiring. This is the part where I hope it all starts to make sense about our battery bank wiring configuration. We currently have two pairs of 24 volt batteries at the moment, and we want to connect them together in a way to increase their storage capacity, amp hours, and not increase the voltage. So we will wire the positives to the positives and the negatives to the negatives this time around. A parallel connection, again, which means we will increase the amps being stored and thus give us our 24 volt, 540 amp hour battery bank. I am showing the parallel wiring multiple times with different angles in hopes that the configuration is clearly depicted for you guys. I removed all the battery bank terminal covers, made sure all lugs were in direct contact with their respective battery terminals, installed washers on both sides, and tighten everything down with the nut and a half inch socket and wrench.
Next up, we will be using the Explorus Life 4 aught Lynx Distributor Wiring Kit for the Victron Smart Shunt, which includes wire, a fuse holder, master disconnect, heat shrink, fuse, lugs, mounting screws, and copper bars. I have already made three wires, a black 4 aught negative cable, a red 4 aught positive wire, and a short red 4 aught positive wire. First, I mounted up my fuse holder, this will give me the measurements needed for the exact wire lengths that I need. And with that mounted, I installed my fuse holder and hung the master disconnect switch up on the wall with provided mounting hardware. It is super nice using the copper bar to connect the links to the disconnect switch that came in the Explorus Life Kit. You can now see that we have the red 4 op positive wire running between the fuse holder and disconnect, which is officially installed. And here's our Victron Smart Shunt. This will be getting mounted up on the wall directly above the master shutoff. First thing I did was plug in the VE Direct cable to the smart shunt, with the other end plugging into the VE Direct port of our Servo GX for system monitoring information. Slid the copper bar down over the smart shunt mounting location and tightened it together with the provided hardware. And now for our very last black 4 aught negative cable to be connected, I first attach it to the other side of the smart shunt, then carefully ran it over to the last negative battery connection in our system. I actually use a longer bolt provided with the Battleborn batteries to stack the two negative connections together on one terminal. And now for the real deal, I'm using the rightmost battery terminal and also making sure to install the last heater cable ring terminal with it as well. This is also a very good time to make sure your battery disconnect switch is in the off position. And with our last cable tightened to the battery, I slid the cable up and over to the fuse holder, I tightened it down to an appropriate spec, reinstalled the fuse holder cover, and you know what comes next. You ready? Oh boy. Oh, I saw it turn on. Look. Fan. <gasps> Fridge. We're good. It works. Oh. Okay. It's on. What is up everybody? It's been a little while since I popped on here to talk about our electrical system. It's actually been up and running for about three months now. Been working flawlessly. and We've actually been on the road and we're currently traveling to Colorado so that we could go meet Nate and Steph from Explorus Life. And Nate is actually gonna be doing a full system checkup on our system. He's been following along online, but he wanted to see it in person. So we're really excited to meet them and show them what we made. So you'll be seeing Nate on here shortly. Hey, Nate from Explorers Life here. Cody and Christina, they just uh, got into our shop uh, last night, and Cody's just right outside for context sake. And uh, I've been watching this whole build through Instagram, and it's fun seeing it take shape, something that we make and design. And uh, somebody else uh, who's second electrical install ever um, get to make something like this. And so since they're here, I'm going to go through some of the testing that I typically do whenever we first set up a system and make sure that everything is good to go and they're not going to have any kind of issues. The first thing that I'm always looking for in a system is making sure that all the positives are connected to red wires and all the negatives are connected to black wires. Now, since this system is already up and functional and working, um, and not actively melting, we know that, you know, there's no um, direct shorts or anything like that. The only thing to kind of know on a 24 volt system is these connections that they have here on the back, the positives are connected to negatives, and that's just how a 24 volt battery bank works. So that's kind of the only exception there. Aside from that, all the positives and all the negatives are indeed connected to their proper spots here. The next thing is uh, making sure that solar is working properly because it's kind of easy to think that your solar isn't working. And I always like to use the Victron Connect app here. They have that set up and running. The Pmax column or row, I should say, here is the one I'm looking at. And, you know, they've got 1310 watts of solar up on the roof split between two different arrays, one of 960 watts and the other of 350 watts. And on the Victron Connect app, it only goes back 30 days in the app, 
uh, with a max of 688 watts, but Cody says that he's seen over a thousand watts from his array of the 960 watts, which is great. You know, a solar panel is going to put out more power as it gets colder and a little less power as it gets hotter. So that's a great result. And that coupled with the information we're seeing on the Victron Connect app, uh, just means that everything is working perfectly from a solar standpoint. And the last thing I like to check on a system like this is how the system uh, works under load and specifically checking for loose connections or bad crimps and stuff like that that are going to manifest themselves as heat. So Cody's turned on their induction cooktop and it's, uh, it's pulling, I think, uh, just shy of 2000 watts. And so if we had a loose connection, these connections from the battery to the Lynx distributor and from the Lynx distributor to the Quattro inverter charger would be heating up to a level that we wouldn't really be able to touch them. And uh, that's kind of the way you can check is you can check with your hand all of these connections. But I have a thermal camera that I can just plug into the bottom of my phone and we can check for heat on all these connections. And I'll show you what that looks like. So I've got my thermal camera plugged into the bottom of my phone here and what we're looking at is these are the batteries back here just for context and the um, dark purple here is colder and the white up here is hotter. So we kind of start looking around back there and see what is hot and what is cold and you actually see the steel studs of the box which is kind of fun but i've kind of looked at all the different terminals and connections and stuff like that and there's really no excessive heat now we can see this wire right here is a little bit hot but the wire is only like 83 degrees so that's not something we're like going to worry about like you can see my hand is hotter than that wire and wires are going to heat up a little bit when there's power flowing through them going over here we can see that the quattro is indeed hot because it is flowing lots of power, but the wires aren't particularly hot, so we're not worried about those. Charge controllers, they're putting off a fair amount of heat, this little guy in particular, because he doesn't have a heat sink on the back, but nothing looks out of the ordinary. So I'd say all these crimps and wires are in good shape. So nice job, Cody, good system. Well guys, that about wraps up our full system install with Battleborn Batteries and Explorus Life. I hope you got something out of it. It was really fun putting this system together and we're really happy with how it came out. I just wanted to give a massive shout out to Battleborn Batteries for making such a great product. We had their stuff in our van. It held up for years. We're really excited to have these GC3 batteries in our truck build and a massive, massive shout out to Explorus Life for making everything so easy for DIYers like ourselves to install such a large system. I hope to see you guys out there on the road and please drop any comments or questions you have below. And also use our Battleborn battery code. It'll get you $50 off a of battery, which is in the description below. And if you do buy anything from Explorus Life, let them know we sent you and see you guys later.